Hello guys, Matt here and thank you for choosing to get your gaming news here at Livewire. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at 6, yes 6. Look, I know it's an awkward number, okay? Essential gameplay tactics you should know in For Honor. Based on the blog by Mikel Reparez over at UbiVlogs. And as always guys, if you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button to show your support for the channel and for the For Honor series. Let's try and hit 101 likes for this video. So the 6 essential battle tactics you will need to know in For Honor is coming up straight after this. Number 1 Environmental hazards mean instant death. Standing with your back to a cliff or a wall of spikes is a bad idea in this game. If your opponent breaks your defence, it's not going to exactly end in a tale of valour as far as you're concerned. These environmental hazards in game are a way of easily dispatching opponents that will leave them with no chance of revival just a brief wait until you can respawn. Enemies can also shove you into filming carts or trees, and while being on fire won't kill you instantly, you instead have the pain of slowly being cooked to death. The moral of the story here is awareness of your surroundings is vital. Number 2 Different heroes, different dynamics As we should all know by now, there are a number of different classes you can play as in For Honor, and if you didn't know this, then check out our full class discussion here. Now, with all these classes in each faction, they are separated into sub-roles. Vanguard, Heavy Tank, Hybrid and Assassin. Previously, we were only able to play as the Warden, the Raider and the Kensai, the well-rounded Vanguard heroes for the Knight, Viking and Samurai factions respectively. All of them handle differently, but the same basic rhythms of blocking and slashing apply to all three. But trying out the Arochi Samurai for instance, will immediately apply a whole new gameplay. Where Vanguards hold their stances indefinitely, blocking left, right or up top until you make them move, Assassins drop their guard after a few seconds, which players can see when their depleting on-screen meter reaches empty. This forces you to hold the thumbstick where you want to block. Assassin classes like the Orochi also seem to get overwhelmed by multiple opponents a little more quickly, and in these situations it's best for the Assassins to re-evaluate and retreat. The Assassins' speed makes them brutally effective offensive players. They are able to interrupt or maneuver past the attacks of slower enemies, and deliver rapid flurries of devastating cuts. You can see then, that you must be a master of the battlefield by quickly acknowledging what classes you are entering into combat with, you must get to know their strengths and weaknesses as well as your own. Overextending will definitely get you killed fast in Verona, so stick to your class's limits. Number 3 Combos can tear through a block Landing a sweet combo in most games can make you feel very skilled, even unstoppable. And for a short time, landing combos actually will make you unstoppable in For Honor. Landing the right combination of slashes can light up your weapon, triggering an unblockable attack that will chop right through the defences of anyone not quick enough to dodge it. If you're on the receiving end of one of these, you'll get a brief warning in the form of an exclamation point in the direction that the attack is coming from. You know, in case you miss the vibrant glow of your opponent's weapon? Yeah, if that isn't hint enough. At which point you'll need to resist the urge to block and duck out the way. Number 4 Revive teammates to turn the tide of battle An age-old trick in multiplayer online, but an effective one. So you see teammates on the floor, but you know, you don't know these filthy casuals, and they're clearly too newbie at this game to matter. And of course you're pro as fuck at this game anyway, so you just ignore them, right? Sounds like something you've seen, or sounds like something that you've done. Well done. Teamwork is everything with video game successes such as Overwatch, punching forward to team coordination as the utmost important path to victory. For Honor also seeks to achieve this. So long as your teammates don't fall victim to a devastating execution, there's a chance you could give them a second shot at life. I'm not trying to say that this is always possible. The heat of combat and full on berserker viking rage and fury sometimes cannot be quelled. I understand, but in the right circumstances it can be crucial to victory. One of these circumstances where teammates become even more crucial is when your team has entered the breaking phase of a match when all capture points are in enemy hands and you're being eliminated with no respawns. If you can manage to stay out of sight and revive as many teammates as possible during this phase, it can turn the tide of battle giving you another shot at defeating the enemy team. Number 5 You're useful even when you're dead. Waiting for a revive or a respawn doesn't mean you're out of the fight. Not entirely anyway. While you breathe out, you can move the camera around the map, and if you're communicating with your teammates the way that you should, this makes you an invaluable spotter. Want to warn a buddy that two guys are en route to the control point that he's holding? How about guiding your one surviving teammate safely past danger so she can revive you? In the chaos of battle, having a tactical view, however brief, is invaluable. Number 6 
Capture points give you an edge. Wrestling territory from the other team in the shooter should be familiar by now. You clear them out, take the area, and then rush to the next area and repeat the process while your opponents surge back toward the point you just abandoned. It's okay, we know this sounds familiar, and can be quite frustrating, right? Throna gives you some additional incentives to not only defend your capture points, but to treat them as a resource. If you are injured from one of the many scraps on the battlefield, your team's capture point will immediately start to heal you when you enter them, and keeping them defended will earn you a steady stream of points that can eventually swing victory in your favour. And while we're on the topic of capture points, AI defenders can be seen swelling the centre capture point during the game, when the main fighting tends to occur. Players mix it up with the relentlessly advancing troops on both sides. Having to thin out their ranks and push them back makes the battlefields by far the toughest points to capture. The enemy soldiers take just one hit to put them down, but they can hinder your movement, hide more powerful enemies, and, if you're not careful around them, do some real damage. So don't ignore them. If you want to turn the type of battle into your favour sometimes, the best thing to do as you wait for enemies to respawn is aid your teammates in pushing back the enemy AI, so that your AI has more of a chance to surround the opposing players and slow them down. And that's all for this video guys, tell us in the comments below some of your tips and tricks for surviving the battlefields of For Honor. And if you have any questions, air them out and we will see if we can help you. I have been Matt from LiveWire, you can follow me or the channel on Twitter here, or if you want to know more about the channel then click on our faces on the screen. Or click here for our entire For Honor news post to get caught up on all the latest information. Or click here for our new series on Red Dead Redemption 2 news. Links during this video are also provided in the description box for all you mobile users out there. Until next time then folks, I'll see you later.